Hey guys, welcome back to Everything Plants. If you're new here, thanks for watching this video and please consider subscribing for more houseplant content. In today's video, I thought I'd show you some of the tools and accessories that I use for my plant care. There's been a few of you that have actually reached out and asked for this type of video, so I thought it was about time that I did this. So uh, let's, uh, let's get into it and I'll show you some of the things that I use for my plant care. So the first thing I wanna show is this spray bottle. I posted this on my Instagram account probably about four or five months ago on one of my stories and it kind of blew up. A number of people had reached out asking where I bought this and uh, I bought it at Walmart. This is probably one of my more popular and honestly one of my favorite items that I have in my collection. It is more of a high powered or high pressurized spray bottle. I use this for preventative maintenance with bugs and pests and even to clean leaves off. This makes it uh, especially important in the winter here in Canada. Obviously we can't take our plants outside to spray off with the hose so it makes for a, a, a good cleaning accessory when you can just basically toss it in the tub and spray it down. The way it works is obviously you have to have this uh, seal fairly tight and then it is simply just a pump action uh, spray bottle and then I'm gonna make a complete mess here but um, you just obviously sp spray the plants off so uh, I could have taken this in the tub but um, <laughs> better just to show it here. So um, what I typically do for a lot of my house plants, like my fiddle leaf fig, some of the bigger ones, I will preventatively, I guess, use a regular misting bottle, mix it with uh, kind of like a soap and water mixture, spray off the leaves. Uh, that way I can clean them effectively, as well as it kind of deters spider mites. Afterwards, I can't just take the plant outside and spray it off and give it a good thorough rinse. So this is a good alternative uh, for, I guess, during the winter months and even during the summer months. It's a good misting bottle. So the next one I'm gonna talk about is watering cans. And when I first started out, I thought all watering cans were treated or created equal. And that is not true. I bought one of those uh, dollar store cans, you know, whatever, a dollar or two, and it's got kind of that S curve spout. I do not like that anymore. Since using this one, I think I bought it for like $15 at Canadian Tire. It's just a plastic watering can, but it has kind of this longer spout that comes from the bottom here when watering this compared to just like a regular watering can, this is so much easier. It has less leverage because of the spout at the bottom. And it just, I don't know, it, it, it feels just much better than the other watering can where you kind of have to like, I don't know, I guess tilt it more for the water to come out. This is such a, I don't know, I don't even, I, I've, I've never explained a watering can before. So bear with me folks, but it is much easier I guess, uh, to use this watering can compared to the other. So I don't know if I just confused everyone or not. But anyways, um, I like this type of watering can. The spout is lower. It's a longer spout. And uh, yeah, just overall, I liked it. I don't know. I've never had to describe a watering can before. But um, I also picked up from Canadian Tire, uh, I think for like maybe eight bucks, these little uh, plastic watering trays. They are pretty useful when, uh, I guess, watering like many plants. I just kind of stick them in here, let the water drip out, and then uh, basically what my plan is for the summer is to use the collected water and I can put it in a outside barrel and just use it to water my trees. So that way I'm not just constantly dumping this down the drain. I can actually save and just uh, use the water outside for my trees in the summer. This can also be used as like a repotting tray I know there's a number of sizes and this is one of the smaller ones. I have a large one upstairs, but if you don't want to make a mess on your table or anything like that, just do your project in this container. This is a hygrometer. It measures the humidity kind of within this area or within this room. If you own house plants in numerous rooms throughout your house, I would absolutely recommend getting a few of these. I have two upstairs, one downstairs. I try and keep the levels around that 35 to 40%. And if it's anything lower than that, then I would suggest getting a humidifier. I picked up, uh, this came in a two pack from Costco for like 40 or $50. And it obviously has um, a, an adjustment knob here. You can increase or decrease the humidity humidity that it pumps out but uh, these little gadgets here um, they are pretty effective at increasing humidity around the plants. So obviously another very useful tool is a good set of pruning shears. I think this came in a two pack for $15 again from Canadian Tire. It's probably one of my favorite stores. I buy most of my plant uh, tools and accessories from there. It's just one of those stores where if you've been there, you know they have such good deals all the time. But anyways, uh, make sure you get a nice clean sharp pair of pruning shears. And the thing I like about this is it's fairly small and I guess compact. 
It's very easy to get into kind of tight areas when uh, pruning off old dead foliage. Okay, so this is my repotting mat. I bought this off Amazon a little while ago and uh, basically it comes folded up in a package. You just uh, snap these buttons together and it creates like a, a nice little bowl effect for a repotting or repotting projects. Okay, so the thing, if you were following me on Instagram, you probably saw it on my stories, but uh, they sent me like a mini one. I don't know what the, what happened there, but basically this tarp was supposed to be half the size of this table and it turned out to be a, uh, a little mini. I was wanting something big where I could do some of my larger uh, plant projects, but uh, yeah, it actually worked out pretty good. So if I need a larger one, I can order a larger one, but I actually quite like this smaller version, even though it was kind of like one of those Amazon fail purchases. I'm really happy with the quality of the product and it just makes like a repotting project so much easier. You can put the pot just in the side, stick the plant in and just scoop some soil in and it doesn't make a mess on your table, on your floors, just kind of keeps everything contained. So this next product is a digital light meter. I won't be talking too much about the specifics of this because I'll be making a video down the road kind of explaining and showing what it means to have a plant in bright indirect light, what it means to have a plant in low light. So I'll be explaining all that, but I'll just show it here quickly. It comes with obviously a little sensor and it's got a cover for it. Um, obviously it's battery powered, you turn it on and all you would do is just have this sensor face the light source and it will give you a digital meter reading and then that way you can tell how many. I use foot candles, it is a foot candle and Lux light meter. I'll explain that, like I said, uh, in more detail in a future video. Okay, I'm gonna try and power through this uh, miscellaneous box here as quickly as I can as there's quite a few items in this, but I'm gonna start off with these propagation containers. I picked a tray, I guess there's about 12 of these little jam jars. I picked them up from the dollar store for like $4. And the thing I like about these ones in particular is that they are a little bit more on the shallow side. So if you have uh, some single leaf propagations uh, like these pothos that I have right here, it fits perfectly. If you have something a little bit larger, like with a longer stem, uh, something like this, just an old, I don't know what this is, flower vase. Uh, that's typically what I use are uh, kind of these two. Okay, let's see what else we got in here. Um, I really don't use these moisture meters anymore. I'll show you my other technique here in a second, but if you are a new plant person, this is a good way to gauge whether your soil is dry, moist, or wet. What I use now is this. Uh, this is just a bamboo skewer and the reason why I use this and I learned a trick off uh, Instagram. So what you do is you just basically stick this in a pot uh, right to the bottom and uh, let it sit there for a few seconds and pull it out. If there's soil sticking to the skewer itself, you know that the soil is wet. And also sometimes you can see there will be a little bit of moisture, um, I guess, on the stick and you can actually feel it. Like the soil is probably uh, damp from this point down. So you can tell where the soil moisture level basically reaches down to. This is uh, a pretty easy fail safe method for me and this is what I've been using lately. So the next thing I have is my label maker. I did buy this on Amazon for like $12. I think I have one here as well. I'll show it here. And I basically just stick them to the front of a pot here. This is for a project that I'm working on, so don't look at this one too long. But it just helps me with labeling uh, some of my more difficult to remember plants like Hoyas, if you have them, and uh, you'll know that some of the names are, are pretty difficult to pronounce and remember. And obviously some of the Hoyas, uh, they do look similar. So I just didn't want to kind of mix them up. So I use this fancy little label maker. Okay, so just some random plant wire. I use this to tie up some plants to uh, say like a, a bamboo spike like this. It's a rubber coated flex tie and you can uh, use this on these stems without damaging the plant. Okay, so I just have obviously a mask when I'm spraying off a plant with like Endol or something like that. I don't want to breathe in any of the fumes. Um, 
I do use some trellis. These are little plastic trellises that I uh, use for most of my Hoyas, some that uh, grow upwards. I even have a few of like my pothos plants and stuff that um, I basically, I use this uh, rubber wire and uh, tie up my plants to these little trellises. Uh, some people use moss poles. I'll be, I don't have any in my collection, but I'll be um, hopefully making a couple moss poles for a few plants that I have. But for, for right now, just for the ease of it, I've been using these uh, little trellises. Um, over here, I have some sticky traps for fungus gnats. It is just a yellow sticky paper. You peel off the edging and you clip it onto these little spikes or stakes and just put them in the soil. So these next two products are for insect control. This one is for fungus gnat and thrips. Uh, this is nematodes. Basically, it looks like a little plastic ball you put in your soil and it helps control with bugs and insects. And I recently uh, started trying the systemic houseplant control, insect control. And uh, so far, like I really haven't seen any fungus gnats or any pests, anything like that, other than my ficus altisma that had one little thrip on it, but I tossed it outside. So if you guys use uh, host plant insect control products, uh, what do you use? Have you used either one of these in the past? Let me know down in the comments uh, which one you prefer or which product or brand you've used and how you like these products. Okay, a couple items left. And this one, I have a few pencils and I know there's a few subscribers out there that like seeing my pencil. I use this for just stirring up some soil, getting it off the edges, um, using it in like repotting videos, very useful, just a little pencil. I used to use these uh, little screwdrivers as well. They're good at, um, again, just like poking holes in the soil, aerating it. That's typically what I use it for. These are just some hooks I use for some hanging Hoya pots. I just use it on my curtain rod. So these are just an S shape. I uh, got some orchid fertilizer, haven't used it yet. Uh, some neem oil. I've tried this in a spray bottle with some soap and water just as a preventative measure for cleaning my leaves and for spider mites. Uh, some citrus fertilizer, currently do not have a citrus plant, but uh, when I had my lemon tree, this is what I used. And then just this Foliage Pro. Uh, this is the product that I use for my fiddle leaf fig tree. I basically cut this down into a third of the dose and uh, my fiddle leaf fig trees just absolutely love this product. They just go crazy. And if you have children and if you've ever give Tylenol or Advil, you probably have an infinite amount of these uh, plastic syringes around the house. So I use them for my fertilizer. So that is pretty much all the tools and accessories that I have in my collection and that I use for my plants. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please leave it down in the comment section. Also, let me know what you thought of this video if you liked it. Um, like I said, a few people had asked for it, so I thought I would make it. Thanks again for all the support. Take care, everyone. Bye.